What is up, everybody? The Rye Man here, coming to you with a new episode, or two or three, or four, maybe, of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. It's been a while since we've jumped back into this, about two weeks, um, but I am ready to go. I, re I reviewed my evidence to a degree, and now we are going to be heading to the pub in order to investigate our newest suspect. There we go. We have to we have to disguise ourselves, which we have, and find Patrick Cairns at the Sea Witch Pub. Now, as you guys know, I already have my suspicions on who I think might be the murderer. Because so far, Nelligan just seems kind of like too... Uh, unless he's co-conspiring, I don't think he's capable of using that harpoon to kill... Uh, um, to kill our victim. But Liam Hurtley sure does fit the bill there. Oh, look at this place. Damn, talk about old school. Look at, look at this guy playing the harmonica in the corner like a boss. Like a boss. I'm just seeing what I can interact with or... To be more specific, what I can't interact with. Well, that's Patrick Cairns right there. What the hell? Dude, this is disgusting. Alright, let's see what we can do. Hello there. Are you Cairns? What do you want? Well, you've heard all about the gambling on arm wrestling here. You seem like the likely sort, and I'm up for it. I start at ten shillings. Suits me. Oh, good. Mini game time. Follow Patrick Cairns' facial expressions to understand his moves. Push, restrain, idle. God damn it! It always does that this game. It, uh, and respond with a perfect counter strategy. At least I read that. <clears throat> Hold to restrain. Shit. Let's regain my stamina here. Let's hold the restraint here. I won't lie, I am having a little bit of issue with this, but, oh no you don't. I am not giving out, dude. <clears throat> dude, his hand is like quivering. <clears throat> oh my god, why is this so hard? Up. <clears throat> like I can't, I, it's hard to actually tell when I should push per se. <clears throat> wow, 
What happened to my... Okay, that was weird. <clears throat> Come on, I can do this. I can do this. Come on. I brought my, I brought my hand back to the middle. How long did that take? Lucky. I wasn't focused. Let's go again. Seriously? That took me like f took me like ten minutes to do. Oh Jesus. Let me actually do a quick self-portrait. Alright. Dude, why why was arm wrestling such a difficult sport? I've arm wrestled plenty of times. Ooh, strong hands. That's interesting. Yellow nails. Means there's crap in them. And a sailor's tattoo. Cheap earrings. It's weird that he would have gold earrings then if he's wearing so cheap of clothing. I'm ready to try again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money. No problem with that. Oh, God. Try this again. Mm. Right, let's let my stamina go up a little bit. Mm. When his brows furrow, that's when you want to to push. Oh my god, it took me like a minute this time. What the hell? Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. I'd like to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. Ew. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Alright, so let's think about his profile. He has, like, worn clothes, but he has yellow nails, which I think might be a bit commonplace for sailors. I'm not sure. Yellow nails, gold earrings, which seems off with all the other, like, old clothes he has. Kind of like Nelligan with his jacket. And now... And he also has strong arms. Why do you say poor? You're not working? I'm a harpooner. Oh? But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. He's a harpooner. I feel like that's a red herring. I don't know why. I feel like that's a big-ass red herring. A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Vol Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger, we sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. Yep, he confirmed the black... We already confirmed that he was one of the ones who was on the uh, Black Peter. 
Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumors about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar, and violent too. Swigging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant, and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Oh yeah? Seems like this guy is very willing to cooperate with us because he's not in a point of being interrogated. Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her. And he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she had foundered. And they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. Alright, so they brought a straggler. And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye. Even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. Wait a minute. A tin box? You mean the box that we found that was hidden in the shed? If that's the case, maybe Peter Carey did something with... Maybe that was Nelkin's dad. I mean, wouldn't their family be the only ones who have that tin box? I don't know, maybe I'm getting facts mixed up. It's been a while since I played this, so some facts about the case that's already been revealed I might have scrambled in my head, just to admit. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night, two days before we sighted the Shetland lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. Those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this must stay between us. All right? Of course. Plant pouch, go to toilet. Back in a second. I'm off to the Kazi. I'll be here with my drink. Interesting. Peter Carey was trying to conceal the murder of John Nelligan's father. Oh, it was his father. That's the only reason why he would have that tin box. Plant the pouch into Karen's po pocket and determine if the pouch is his. Patrick Cairns told the story of how in August 1883 he had observed Peter Carey throwing a man overboard. The man had been saved from the sea only the previous night. The man was obviously Joshua Nelgan. Okay, so I do. I did figure that out. Patrick Cairns is a professional harpooner. Like many sailors, he's a heavy smoker, as his yellow fingers indicate. Okay, he the sm it's because of the smoking that his fingers are yellow. Wait a minute. Cairns would have a very good reason to murder Peter Carey, almost. Because when you think about it, Cairns' motive could be that, you know, be, uh, this, the, Black Peter, Peter Carey, murdered John Nelligan's father. So, knowing what kind of person Black Peter is, or Peter Carey is, I, he might have gone to off him, but then how would he have gotten access to the shed that, you know, the shed where he harpooned him, or, yeah, that was a little shed. I don't know, I think it's a red herring. I think they want me to think Patrick Cairns is it. Here it is.
Can I go to the bathroom? Do I have someone else that I need to look at? I don't think so. Investi investigate suspect Patrick Cairns. Well, I guess he assumes that I. That me getting up was me going to the John. So I guess we'll talk to him once more. Tobacco. Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, oh. Oh, it is! Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe. If you like, I. I'm done here. It's time to leave. Thank you, Captain Exposition. Yeah, but I don't think this guy did it. I mean, strong arms, harpooner, you know. It just all seems way too convenient, you know. Karen's has confirmed that the pouch belongs to him. This means that he was at the scene of the murder and thus proves his guilt. No, it doesn't. Pouch belongs to him. That means he was at the scene of murder, but does not necessarily prove that he is the murderer. I pick that one. Ooh. Huh, so... Hurtley's motive plus a lucky throw. So if I pick feet of strength, then it takes out him as being a suspect? Oh, there it is. Harmless Ferdin confirmed that Liam Hurtley was flirting with Peter Carey's wife and even fell in love, but it doesn't go beyond the affectionate, beyond harmless letters and words. I feel like it was desperate jealousy, to be completely honest. Oh. Hurtley's motive and Hurtley's innocence. Because of the motive for killing Peter Carey, or ex explained what by his affection and the fact that he worked there as a gardener. So what happens if I pick Lucky Throw here? All that connects. Yep. This gives a little bit more. All right, let's see what happens if I click that. Hmm. I do believe I got a mystery on my hands, Mike. Well, let's go back to Baker Street for now. It seems like I might have enough evidence to incarcerate somebody. But I want to make, make sure that I think about this carefully, because I do not, do not want to make a big mistake here. I made so many mistakes in L.A. Noir, it's insane. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer? I honestly don't know. I don't Brave think so. Brave Toby. Uh, let's... I don't know why you have your telescope trained on her. My analysis table. Yes. Perfectly aware of us here. Analysis table. Oh, hey, he got out of his disguise. My archive. I can always consult with it. My archive. Hmm. I think I'm at that point in the game. I think I have to make a deduction. 
Yeah, I can't go back to the pub anymore. Let's go back to Scotland's yard really quick, because I'm pretty sure there's nothing I can do back at our place. Let's see if there's anything else I can look at. But what if the red herring isn't a red herring? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,